Hello friends, this video on continuity and differentiability part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1. Now, since we are going to study differentiation now, let's talk more about differentiation. Integration may be in the next chapter which we will study integration. The first question that comes to our mind is, why should we study differentiation? One example I gave you was the car, but there are more examples in real life, more application of differentiation in real life. With this, you will get some enthusiasm to understand differentiation. So one example I have, the same example which I gave you, you have this car, you move in the car and you want to find, for example, no, you are moving from city A to city B and this is your, uh, um, this, let's suppose this is my distance and this is your time and you have plotted the distance covered with respect to time, you got this graph and now you want to find the speed at this point C, then it's very easy if you know differentiation, you have this graph at this point just find delta y by delta x. If you have delta y by delta x at this point c, this will give you speed at this point c. Also if you want to find acceleration, you double differentiate that, you will get acceleration because acceleration is nothing but uh, uh, distance by time square actually. So that is acceleration. So if you are a, term, if you're, if you're a student of science, you must be knowing acceleration is distance by time square but if you are not student of science don't get confused with the terms just understand that if you have this in the, in the world of physics we use this if you have distance and graph you want to find the velocity or the speed you can find it using differentiation also in case of aeronautics differentiation is used a lot so I told you differentiation and integration are generally used you know, where the mass or you know, where even the any any quantity is variable. Quantity is variable. So in this case, if you see the rocket mass keep decreasing because the fuel itself is a part of rocket, right? The the moment fuel burns, the weight of rocket decreases, and the the weight or the mass of the rocket is critical parameter in finding the pressure and all those things. So in, in the world of physics, if you are no, in, in the aeronautics world, you need differentiation. You want to find the speed, you want to find the acceleration of this rocket and no, the, uh, the rate at which the mass is going down and those kind of stuffs, you need differentiation. If you are planning to go into the field of chemistry, in that case also, you need differentiation. Here you have to find the rate of change of reaction. For example, no, you have uh, sulfur and then you have, no, uh, you add water, you get S2SO4 and those kind of reactions you get. There you want to find the rate of change of reactions. Those kind of thing is done using differentiation. Let's suppose you are not in the field of science, you are in the field of economics and you are wrong. No, Manager is a company and where you are, uh, you have the sales chart, where you have the sales chart. Now, if you know differentiation, you can do a lot of stuff with this. You can find the maximum value and the minimum value. You can find, if you have the sales chart, you can find the maximum value. On which date you are getting the maximum sales? On which date you are getting the minimum sales? Those kind of stuffs you can find using differentiation that is max and min value of a graph. So if you have a graph you can find the maximum value and the minimum. For example sales for revenue, the cost incurred, for a lot of things we have the graphs. A lot of things you know, when you, if you are if you go into the management level almost everything is represented using graphs and if you know differentiation you can find the maximum value, minimum value. So this is used a lot. Also a lot of time the slope is also required. For example, you want to find a trend of the uh, sales. You want to find the rate at which your sale is going up or the rate at which the sale is going down, then you need differentiation. So please note, you want to find the rate at which something change, right? 
maybe the revenue increase, the revenue decrease, the reaction happens, the speed change, the distance change. This is one example where you find unit differentiation. Or if you want to find the maximum or minimum value, unit differentiation. One more example. So in the in the case of weather forecasting, so weather forecasting, we use differentiation because in that weather forecasting, the rate of change of precipitation, the rate of change of uh, PPT, you no, know, the rate of change of hot air, cold air, everything is calculated, and based on that, the forecasting is done on a lot of parameters. So. In case of forecasting, weather forecasting, sales trend, revenue trend, chemistry, physics, aeronautics, the distance, the velocity, acceleration, a lot of places you need definition. But the main thing, the common thing here is in most of the places we are looking for rate of change of something or the maximum or minimum value of something. So differentiation is used. When we have an equation, you want to find the maximum value or the minimum value, or you have a graph, you want to find the rate of change of that graph with something. So in those kind of things, we need differentiation. Now, I also told you something about integration where you have this curve, you have this x axis, you find the area, right? So integration was something delta y into delta x and you add up, right? It was the integration. And differentiation I told was nothing but delta y by delta x. Now, the question is why should I study integration? I didn't tell you about much about why should you study integration. So let me give you one basic example. The more we'll discuss in the integration chapter. But since I touched upon integration, let me give you a very basic example of integration. So let's suppose there are two hill. This guy is hill A and this guy is hill B. This is a natural hill and this is an artificial hill and this is a natural hill. So if you see this curve, there is no curve, just straight line and this guy is a curve. Now in both of these here, you want to take this guy stone up the hill. In the first case, if you see, since the slope is constant, slope is constant, straight line, the work required almost is same any place and you can find it very easily the work required from here to here you can find because in if you apply if you know physics you can find the frictional force right you have a way you can find the frictional force and then you can find the force required to get this guy up here and this guy is same because there's a normal the angle is same so this guy friction force will be same right and you will have the constant force this here in this case the force required is constant, correct? And then you can add this constant force by, you know, just multiply this force into the distance, you get the total work done. In this case, if you want to move this guy up, the story is different here. Please note, the story is different here, why? Because the slope changes. Here, if you see, the friction force is different. Here, the friction force is different. Why? Because this angle is different. Here the angle is something else. The angle is this. Here the angle is more. Here the angle is even more. Here the angle is less. The angle change. So the force required also change over the period of time. So here is, you can say that force required is variable. So here you need less force because the less steep. The moment you go up, it's more steep. So the force required is more. So what can we do in this case? In this case, if I want to find the total force required, what we can do is we can divide these things into small, small piece, right? And then we can add all this. And that's what we do in case of integration. We divide the work into smaller piece and then we add them all. For example, if you have this graph also, and then you have the slope and you want to find the area. As I told it was, it is delta y into delta x. We want to find the area. We divide it into smaller, smaller piece and add them all. So this is what is there in integration. So in integration, nothing but 
dividing work into small small part and adding up and this is one example by me integration in real life where the things are not constant things are variable so you divide things into small small part and then you add them all this is one example of integration so so having understood what is calculus calculus is nothing but differentiation and integration as i told and differentiation is nothing but delta y by delta x change in y with respect to x if you have a equation in this in terms of y and x you want to find the change in y change with respect to x at a particular point p you can use differentiation and there is nothing but finding slope at a point p and in real life we have a lot of application for this integration is nothing but you have delta y you have delta x you multiply and you add and we, i gave you one example of integration in real life more examples we can learn in the integration chapter so having understood integration and differentiation let's turn to the chapter the chapter is all about differentiation and continuity so i told you about differentiation i told you about integration also there is not required but still should know it so i told you now the question is why should i study so when the chapter is all about differentiation why should i study continuity what will happen if i don't study continuity okay now the catch here is the derivative of a function at a point p exist if and only if the function is continuous at point p so the requirement here is or the catch here is if the function is not continuous at a point p the derivative doesn't exist so the precondition of a derivative is that the function must be continuous at a point p so i'll discuss that part also so continuous is always defined at point p i mean at some point so we'll discuss this but this understand that the reason why we are studying continuity is con continuity is the first step to derivative if a function is continuous at the point p then only you can find derivative so what is continuity i'll tell you but just understand the reason why we are studying continuity is because continuity is the first step if the function is not continuous you can't find derivative at that particular point so let's do a recap so we have calculus in calculus we have differentiation and integration differentiation is nothing but my delta y by delta x i gave you some examples and integration is nothing but delta y into delta x and you add them all and to study differentiation the continuity is the first step now let's start our thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again